Hi, everybody, and I'm really excited about this interview today. I'm here with Maddie, and she's a famous um, latch, um, latch hooker. Um, and um, and, um, and um, anyway, um, Maddie, would you mind giving an introduction to yourself? Um, okay, uh, I'm not really famous. But latch hooking is a hobby I enjoy, yes. Cool. Uh, and, go oh. ahead. Uh, oh, so um so so um the um the way that um the way that I contacted with uh, with Maddie is I um is, is she posted some of her um latch hooking online and 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 it was just really, really cool. And um I um, I've done um, I've done latch hooking at, at two points in my life, and now um, and, and now I'm um, just um, I'm thinking of, uh, uh, um, Maddie's inspiring me to get back into latch hooking, um, but uh, um, but but when I was a little kid, then I did latch hooking, and then um, and then um, and, um, and then and, and then as an adult, I thought I, I thought oh this um, this was actually really really cool, um, so um, this, um, so. Um, so so then I got into it again, and and, and now um, now I um, I've I've been like kind of recently inspired by um, um, by that I've um, I, I learned how to solve the Rubik's cube, and there, there there there's some people that do like Rubik's cube art, Rubik's cube art like they take like a thousand Rubik's cubes and and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, and and anyway, that, um, that that reminds me a lot of latch hooking because you could use basically the same template that they use for this Rubik's cube art and make a cool latch hook out of it. So uh, um, so so anyway, um, could um, could um, could you tell us how how you got into latch hooking? Well, I was looking online for like some kind of easy hobby just to do with my hands or something that's not too complicated. And I done something similar in the past. And I was like, okay, I'll try this and see where it goes from here. And so I bought one and made I made one. It was like a Labrador with a sunflower and the first one I made was for my mom. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I actually have, I just started this year. So I haven't been doing that many. I've only done probably three or four. No. Yeah, probably about four. Uh, uh, okay. So, um, so. So that's really uh, that's really cool that you just that you just started this year. Um, so so did um, and you mentioned you did something similar. What, what was the similar hobby that you did before that choking? Well, I'm not exactly 100 percent sure what it was because I just got this craft thing in a box like from my aunt and it was like many years ago. So I'm not sure what it was. But it was just a simple, like, you take a piece of felt and you put it over this hole. You take a tool and shove the felt into the hole. And it kind of made this butterfly pattern. Uh, uh, okay, cool, cool. And where do you, um, where, uh, uh, where, where have you found your, your latch hooking kits? Um, all, all the three or four that you've done, have you um, have you gotten them from the same place or different places or? Um... Well, I I mainly just use Amazon because it's the easiest. <laughs> yeah, and and I um the um the second um um the first the first time I did latch hooking I uh, the first time I did latch hooking I don't remember like where I. Um, well, I think, um, I think my mom, I, I think my mom got me, um, got me the latch hooking kit. Um, but, and, and I don't remember how many I did when I, uh, when I was a kid, but, but, um, um, maybe, um, maybe not too many, but I just like, like it, 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 it it's this cool thing that, um, uh, it's this cool thing that, um, just, just always stuck with me as a, as a kid. Um, 
So, um, so, so, so your first one was a Labrador. Um, what, um, what, what are the other ones that you? Um, oh, um, I've done a raccoon. Mm -hmm. It was also a rug. And it was just a little raccoon for my partner. And then I did a pillow that has like coffee and coffee beans and stuff on it. And that one I made for my dad. And then right now, or and then after that is when the uh, Winnie the Pooh looking bear rug that you saw. Uh -huh. And then right now I'm doing a stitch one, like a Lilo and stitch for okay. my uh, brother, for my little brother. And then I'm doing a sort of butterfly looking one for my grandma. Oh, cool. Oh, and, um, and, and, and um, that was one of my, uh, that, that was one of my questions to you is because um, um, whenever um, whenever I whenever I do them, I, I I don't think it would be possible for me to do like two two at the same time. And I really um, I, I really also like um, jig, um, jigsaw puzzles. I think I you, you can see some of my jigsaw puzzles in the um, in, um, in, in in the back. And I could um, I could never do like two of those um, two things like that at the same time. So so one of my questions is how um, how how are you able to do like two two um, Two, two of the same like crafty things at the same time? Well, mainly I'm able to do it because I have them in two separate areas. And then I kind of like, I don't stop like in the middle of an area. I usually like either finish that color or go all the way to the end. So it's not too confusing when you have to pick it back up. Uh, cool, and that's um, that's and, and um, what um, what do you mean that you have them in two different areas? Well, I have one here in my house, and then I have one at my work, which is my mom's grooming shop. So I just sit down there and do it all day. Okay, cool. Um, that's um, and 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 that's. That's a good idea to have them like physically, like, like in two different in two different buildings. So, so I think I could probably, I think I could probably do that, um, do that too. Oh, and and I don't know if um, I don't know if people know. Um, I, I don't know if all of my viewers know like exactly what latch hooking is. Um, would you mind giving like a um, like like talking about latch hooking? And, and I don't know if you're. Um, I don't know if you have any of your designs available to show for the this video, but uh, but 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 if you have. Um, if, if you have if you have one handy that um, th um, that you could show, then that would be really cool. Um, how to explain it? Yeah, <laughs> that's a really hard one. Um, I mean, I guess if you're into pixel art, it's similar. Like the designs are like in pixel art, but you use like yarn to a color yarn to make that art and you just have this tool that you just kind of loop it and bring it out through and that's not a very good explanation i would just say look it up <laughs> to anyone yeah. who is curious and i actually don't have one on hand right now i have one in the other room, but that's kind of occupied at the moment. Okay, and um, and that's um, and that's no um, and that's no problem. Uh, uh, that's no problem at all. So, um, so 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 the way um, the, uh, the way that I would describe it is is it's kind of like uh, what's because um, my grandma my grandma did a thing where um, with, with 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 needle and thread like cross cross. Oh, uh, um, it. It's like needle stitch or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, like, like needle stitch. And there's, um, there's another one that either has cross in the name or sounds like something like cross, where, um, where, um, where, where, where it's like thread on a canvas. And then, la and then latch hooking is, um, uh, um, latch hooking is, um, has, has kind of like, like, um, big kind of flowy, 
stuff. So, so it kind of looks it kind of looks like a rug, and a, and a lot of like latch hookers make rugs, and then and then a lot of um, a lot of times people make rugs out of latch hook canvas, um, and and a lot of like the thick shaggy rugs. Um, yeah, like, thick... <laughs> yeah, you you could definitely make your own like a big tapestry or something like that. Yeah. Um, so, so, so when you, uh, like, I know when I first started latch hooking, I kind of, I kind of messed up and, um, and then, uh, and then I had to like take, um, take them apart. And then, um, and, and then with, with latch hooking kits, they, they usually give you a few extra ones, but they don't act, they don't give you like a whole bunch of extra ones. And so I remember the first, uh, the first time I did it, I didn't, I kind of messed, I kind of messed up. Um, uh, um, do, do you have any experiences like that, or or have you always um, uh, ha, um, have you always like done done it pretty perfectly? No, I have messed up plenty. Like, I will look at the line that I'm supposed to do, like the one above it. <laughs> so I end up accidentally doing that, and when I figure it out, I usually go back and take them all out. <laughs> redo the whole line and that's funny because the other day like I just got the new butterfly pillow I'm making and I didn't print a pattern on there very well and you can't really see it and tell what's going on and they didn't like mark out like the grid at all so like I started from the wrong side like I was I instead of starting down here I accidentally started over here and did like three lines before I figured it out and then I had to redo the whole thing so I just ended up taking the threads out and reusing them I don't throw my thread away unless like it's too loose or you know messed up to use again uh -uh. yeah and that's um yeah i um i i remember that uh, i remember that too because I, I i really don't like throwing thread away um, um, but um, but but it seems like when I uh, when I mess up the thread then it, uh, or when I mess up and have to take it out then um, then it's still then it's kind of like not perfect anymore. Um, yeah. so, so so whenever I mess up, I'm like ah um, now now I have to reuse this. But then um, but then um, but then like later um, la later it might be like bent a little bit and it'll just kind yeah. of drive me um, drive me batty. So 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 you kind of um, you kind of mentioned this that like like some of the kits are. Some of the kits are lower quality, and then some of the kits are are, are higher quality. Uh, um, have you found um, have um, have you found um, have you found that? And it, 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 is there like one brand that you'd recommend, or 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 have have you looked very much with brands? I know um, it, it, it it's um, it's interesting because some of the um, because some of the kits are like really really cheaply produced, and 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 um, um, those, those aren't necessarily bad or or. or or, or or worse, but uh, um, but then um, because um, because of what latch hooking is, then um, and, and it and it takes like a lot of like, like to get to get all those uh, um, to, to get all those like individual things of yarn in in um, like it's a it, it's a pretty intensive thing for the companies um, making it to to do all of that stuff. So, um, so so anyway, I think with latch hooking, there's a lot of difference between like the really, really cheap ones and the really, really um, expensive ones? Well, luckily I haven't come across one that is just horrible. Like all of them have been pretty good. I would say the uh, tool that I usually use, like the kits come with a tool. And it's usually like got a pink bottom with a neon green yellow kind of top and then the metal part. And 
I like that one. I got another tool from another kit that was just totally like neon yellow. And it was smaller. And I don't like it that much because I'd have to like kind of do it a different way because it gets stuck. So I'd have to like kind of pull it through harder. <laughs> It wasn't as fun, and I like the other ones better. They're a little bigger. I I wouldn't know how big. Uh, -uh. so have um have you have you ever thought about designing your own pattern? I would like to, but I'm not that good with like art and stuff. So like, if someone else did it for me then I would probably be able to make whatever they wanted. Uh, um, cool and and um and good um good 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 idea with that. When um what um I was kind of I was kind of kicking around like um, um designing my own um designing my own patterns and and I realized that a lot of um like like a lot of old old games like um like like Pac-Man um, because they're already uh, um, they're already in the pixelated um, the, the pixelated thing and and especially like the 1980s games um, because in the 1980s games they they only had uh, they usually only had like eight colors and and sometimes they maxed out at like 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 20 colors and um, and so and so that's actually really really easy to map into like like latch um, latch hooking so so I made a couple of like Pac-Man and um, um, Pac-Man latch hooks um, just uh, um, just on my own using um, um, you um, you um, you because um, because I went online and like looked up like the exact like like um, uh, pixel map of the Pac-Man thing and so so, so anyway, um, I um, I think that's uh, I think that's all really really interesting. So so have you. Um, have you encouraged any of your like family or family or friends to start start latch hooking? Um, I've sort of tried, um, but everyone just is. They're always like, I don't know, if you can do this. It's so tedious and things like that. But you know, I've got my podcast, so I have audio I need something visual and I need some with my hands and so I get it all in one uh, uh cool so um so so what um what what podcasts do you like and are there any electric podcasts out there well, I don't know about latch speaking podcasts I think that would be pretty difficult. I think that would is last hooking more visual. And I listen to a lot of different podcasts really. Um uh I don't know if you know Mark Applier on YouTube, but his podcast Distractable is pretty funny. It's him and his other two friends, and they pretty much just talk about one topic and they kind of just go off on their own little tangents and it's pretty funny oh cool i'll have to check him out um one of the um one of the things we talked about before is how you uh, like, like some of the games um some of the games that you like um, you, um, you'd mentioned um, you'd mentioned the start um, Stardew Valley, Stardew Valley, and Animal Crossing, and I um, I, um, I I've never actually played Animal Crossing, but um, but but I uh, but I love Stardew Valley Valley, and I really love all the like clones of Stardew Valley, like um, uh, because I think um, like like there's my time at Porsche, and um, and, and I um, I I need to pull up my Nintendo Switch to. Um, um, to find that, but 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 I um, at one point I think I bought all the all, all like Stardew Valley and then all the stuff like Stardew Valley. Um, 
um, um, just um, just because I really really like that that genre uh, um, that that genre of game. But 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 I'm kind of I, I'm kind of scared of Animal Crossing, and I've never actually like played it or bought it um, because because I kind of I, I kind of don't like the well, and and, and it's because um, it's kind of my reaction to mo to mobile phone games um, mm -hmm. because um, because like um, I don't like the games where you where you have to log in every day um, and. And, and, and I think if you don't let, I think if you don't log into Animal Crossing, then like your your whole village dies, or or or, or like your farms dry up, or some uh, something like that. And and, and that's um, that's kind of why I like Stardew Valley because if you don't log in for, um, if you don't log in for, uh, for 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 a week or a month or a year, then you go back and your farm your farm is exactly the um, exactly the same. So um so 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 anyway. Um, I, um, I was hoping you could talk about uh, both Stardew Valley and, and Animal Crossing, and and if you think that um, if you think that I'm if you think that I'm right in being afraid of an, an Animal Crossing, and and, and I think it's um, I think it's just that I uh, like I have a lot of friends that, um, that 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 like on their Nintendo Switch profile they have like 500 or 700 or um, a, um, a thousand a, a thousand hours logged into logged into Animal Crossing, so. Um, so um, and, and, and I know, like after you um, after you pay for it, they're not trying to get you to pay more and more and more, which uh, um, which is really cool. Um, and, and that's the biggest thing that I don't like. But but anyway, um, I'm sorry sorry my my introduction to my question is getting really really long, so I should probably let you talk about um, Stardew Valley and, and and Animal Crossing. Well, I just started Stardew Valley the other day. And I got a lot of mods for it. Like the fishing is really hard for me. It's not something I'm really able to do. So I got a mod that I didn't have to reel a minute, does it for me. And I really like that. And uh, I've been playing a lot, even though I've like just got it for like a few days i've just i've been playing it constantly and i'm still on year one but i'm really enjoying it so far and um in animal crossing um uh, like you do log in every day but that's mainly if you want po certain points and if you get more of those points, you can buy things with it. But I pretty much have way too many points for anything right now. Uh, I just went through an update, which is awesome. They reintroduced one of the characters from the other games. And uh, yeah, if you like do decide to like you know skip a week or a month or whatever nothing like super bad is gonna happen like there's gonna be like tons of weeds <laughs> and you know nothing really dries up and dies um you don't really um have that many things to do that for except like turnips but those are like a weekly thing uh yeah but those are the main bad issues i mean like if you're away for a while and then come back like there's cockroaches in your house you have to like run around and squish <laughs> it's pretty funny but um yeah there's a lot of customization in that game and like you can pretty much customize your whole island you can terraform uh you can even like make your own clothes and stuff and it does use like pixel art so like you could probably you know make some really cool stuff like i found stuff from other people that I've used on my island, which is another thing you can do if you got the online stuff. Uh, I've got uh, one of the posters from 
The X Files, the one that says I want to believe. And I've got that one, and I've got some other stuff that's pretty cool. I like the customization and the the bad part about this new update that everybody has been complaining about is in order to get there are two parts. There's the free DLC part. And then there's kind of an add-on that I'm not going to get because you have to also buy some more of the online services from Nintendo like another year or something to be able to also get that. And that is something I'm just not interested in. Huh. So, so, so it sounds, um, it sounds interesting and maybe, um, and maybe I, uh, maybe I've been unfairly scared about animal, um, animal crossing because it sounds like, um, it sounds like basically like all the stuff that I like about Stardew Valley, except, um, except that they have like an extra bonus if you log in every day. So, um, so, so I was, um, I was, I was thinking that like like if you logged in after if you logged into Animal, Animal Crossing after um, after a um, after a, after like a month or two then it would say oh your progress has been reset to zero your um, uh, um, um, rival um, rival uh, rival islands have pillaged your um, has have pillaged your island and so 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 it sounds like it sounds like it's really really similar to Stardew um, Stardew Valley so so how did you um, how did you how did you find Stardew Valley and why um, why, uh, why did you uh, uh, was it uh, was it the new update that kind of forces you to buy the 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 online the online package that that drove you to Star Stardew Valley or, or what um... no <laughs> like I I'm gonna download the free part I'm not interested in the other part um, but. Like my partner, he plays a lot of computer games and he had um, Stardew Valley and we both have Steam. So he's able to like send me games so I can play them. So he, he was like, why don't you try this? I think you would really enjoy it. So I, I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. And he put on the mods for me and everything. And it's really fun because I can, instead of the mouse and keyboard, which is generally what you use to play it, I, he, uh, it's to where I can use a controller for it, which is a lot easier for me. Oh, cool. That's um, that's really um, that's really awesome. So so are um, are Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley the only ones that you played like like in that genre? Have you played others like like my time? I've played to, others. It's like uh, Room Factory Four is like super amazing. Like the the Room Factory franchise is pretty good, but. RF4 is the one I play the most, and I beat the game like three or four times because I just enjoy it so much. <laughs> cool. That's um, that's um, that's awesome. So, so how many um, how many games like that have you have you beaten and then gone um, gone through um, gone through again? Well, not that many because. It gets to where a point to where I'm like I I don't have any worse like continuing through it, but with that game like I enjoyed going through it multiple times because it's like different because they're like Story Valley, there's multiple people you can marry, multiple events it's it's really fun 
Oh, um, cool. And then what, um, what other, um, what other games have you, have you played like, like Rune Factory 4 and Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing or, um, or what, um, or what games are on your two playlists that, uh, that, that are similar to those? Well, I like Valheim. It's kind of a Viking game, a Viking survival. And it's got, you know, the the uh, farming, the crafting, the, it's really fun. And my partner has it, so we kind of play co-op together. And uh, he, he's really good at building these really big fortresses with, like, bunches of rooms. Uh, it's that one's really fun. I mean, I've played maybe a handful of other ones. Like I've played a few of the uh, older Animal Crossing games. Those were fun. Like uh, New Leaf was the one before uh, the one that's out now, New Horizons. And it's pretty fun, too. Well, all of them are pretty fun. They're similar, but, you know, they also, from each generation, is something new. Yeah, and that's um, that's a really uh, that's a really good point and and very very interesting um, discussion and then um, re um, review of the games. So so have you ever done have you ever done like game reviews or, or other kinds of reviews like that? No, um, I'm not that great at video games. I'm more of a book person. Um, I recently. Started, I don't know why I didn't mention this earlier, but I recently started to get into paleontology, which is so fascinating to me. And, Just, and so what's um so so what's what's paleo what's paleontology? Um, um, is, um what, it, it's it, it, like it, it, fossils. Oh, okay. Yeah, and like dinosaurs and well not just dinosaurs, but it's it's really interesting to find out things that I thought I knew that weren't right or the things that movies make you think that isn't right. And and so um so so what's um uh, what's an example of, of that of something you you found out by studying paleontology? Well, uh, I didn't know that pterodactyls were not dinosaurs. I thought they were a dinosaur, but apparently they're not. Oh, and I, and, and, I, and I didn't know that. So, so if pterodactyls aren't dinosaurs, then, then what, what are they? I'm not exactly sure what their uh, family is or... Uh, I'm not good at the whole phylum or whatever it is, at the different groups. Um, and did you know that uh, Tyrannosaurus rexes, they didn't roar because they didn't have a larynx. Oh, so, so they were, um, they, um, they were just like si um, silent. Silent dinosaurs? No, I think they they like made girling noises and things like that. But, they but just, said it was more like the cooing of a pigeon, which sounds really odd to me. <laughs> yeah, because um, yeah, they they probably can't um, portray that in um, in movies. Um, in movies, very or, or like a, a, a roar in a movie makes uh, makes it sound like a lot um, a lot more um, a, a lot more fearsome 
uh, than, than, a, than a cooing sound. So, so one of the things that I've been thinking about Tyrannosaurus um, rexes because uh, um, um, because they were big, but but movies make them look like really really big. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and like even movies that even movies where they're realistic sized, then then they still have like the angle. So uh, like the camera's here and the Tyrannosaurus rex is right here. So 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 I think Tyrannosaurus rexes are like. For, um, 20 feet tall or 40 feet tall or, or, or whatever, like they're really, um, they're really big compared to a human, but they're not like, uh, they're not like as big as a skyscraper or they're, they're, they're not like kaiju size. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and so, so I was thinking that like, like if, if there really were a Jurassic Park um, and they made like realistic um, Tyrannosaurus Rexes, then, then probably the people would be like, uh, that's a that's a mini Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's not a like like if they if they actually did like a real or or, or if we could time travel and go back in time, then uh, then I think with, uh, with with how movies portray Tyrannosaurus Rexes, then everyone would be like, oh, these where where, where are the big Tyrannosaurus Rexes? Because this because yeah, these ones like, are um, e um, the even though um, even though um, even though Tyrannosaurus Rexes are are, are really really big, um, just compared to um, compared to the movies, then they're um, <laughs> then like the um, reality and how movies portray them are just really 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 different yeah like uh the velociraptors like they portray them as pretty you know decent size but they were actually turkey size and they had feathers so they were more like ferocious turkeys yeah there were other raptors that were pretty big, but the velociraptor was just turkey size. And uh, there's a lot of misconceptions that we get from things like Jurassic Park. And it's just, it's funny to see the ways that we were uh, thought, you know, was so real, and then to find out, well, it's not like that. And um, just some of the fossils, but like the way that they're found uh, is interesting. Like it, um, there was a velost no. Not a velociraptor, Utah raptor. Uh, they they found like a group of them stuck in like quicksand, and they think you know the smell of another dying dinosaur attracted them, and when they went to go eat it, they got stuck in the quicksand. So and and um, and and you, you brought up the Utah Raptor and I and I spent most of my um, I spent probably most of my life in um, in, in Utah and they have like like in Utah and a couple of the surrounding states there uh, there are lots and lots of fossils and and like dinosaur museums and stuff like that so so have you ever thought of taking a trip to uh, um, um, to Utah or, or or to one of those um, I think. Um, I think it's Colorado that has like like the Colorado Utah border ha, um, has a lot of um, um, has a lot of like dinosaur um, stuff. Or um, would, um, would would you ever go to a dinosaur museum, or, or or are you more interested in like reading about it in books? I would love to go, but I'm not much of a traveler. You know, um, it's. Probably it's a few hours to get to the airport from here. And it's just kind of hectic on me and my back, especially. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, in um it's it's interesting in 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 Thailand I've been to a couple like like parks where where they have just a bunch of of like concrete dinosaurs where where like kids can like Climb up on them and take and take photos. And uh, there was one park that I went to that it, it, it had probably like probably probably over a hundred different like like huge huge dinosaurs that, that you had that you could like climb up on and, and take take photos. So so anyway, I think those I, I think those things are kind of are kind of interesting. 
I would love to. Uh, I think there is one. Um, not a museum of natural history. I think there's one like three hours from me, and I would definitely love to go and see. See what they have, you know. It'd be very interesting. Like, I want to go to the one in Lawrence, Kansas. That'd be fun too. And what's what's the one what's the one in Lawrence, Kansas? Or what, what what's that one, and what does it do? Um. Well, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but in the book I've been reading, there's this really neat velociraptor fossil that was from there, and I would like to go and see it. Or not velociraptor, sorry, pterodactyl. It was because it got fossilized it was very interesting because it was like it, it the gases of when the, the creature died expelled an egg and it had like another egg like still inside like it was gonna, it was like ready to lay the eggs but it didn't quite make it uh -uh. and so what what was the thing that got what was the thing that got you interested in paleontology in the first place? <laughs> I was just looking on YouTube and saw something random and interesting. And I was like, well, why don't I see what's going on? And just like from the first video, he was like, going through these different fossils and the and like in the book that I have and it was just really interesting and I was like man I want to know more about this so I just started you know looking into it and I bought this bought the book I was like I'm definitely gonna enjoy reading this I'm about Halfway through, I'm trying to pace myself so I don't like read it all at once because I would definitely do that. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, and I um I do that um I, I do that sometimes too, um, especially something that I really really like. I um I try to um I try to just um just read um read or or digest a little bit um a little bit at a time. So I think. Um, I think that's really, I think that's really cool that it's so, it's so exciting that you're doing that. Thank you. So, so one of the, um, one of the things that, one of the things that we talked about before, um, uh, before the video was, and, and I don't, uh, let me see if I can say this right, is um, Friedrich's, Friedrich's ataxia. Yes. Um, and, yeah. and, and I don't, um, I don't know, um, I don't know very much about at all about that and if you're if you're okay talking about it then um could you um could you talk about it and give um like give some information about it yeah um predicts attack that is a neuro sorry neurodegenerative disease and like similar to ms my muscles degrade over time. Uh, like anyone, there are many different versions of ataxia, but, and they're genetic, which is you, you get them from your mom and dad. And like with most ataxias, you only have to have it from like one parent to pass it to the child. But with Friedrich's attack that your both of the parents have to have the gene and then they have to pass it on to the child. And uh -huh. there's only a, a certain amount of chance of that even happening. So like I could have had two or three full-blooded siblings that were, you know, normal, and then I could have been the only odd one out. Like, I do have other siblings, but not 
full blood siblings. And uh, so it was kind of a kick in the teeth because, you know, there's only a slim chance I would have gotten it anyways from both of my parents. And like neither of them knew about it or even knew to like test for it or anything like that. Because we don't know of anyone in my in our family that has it. Uh-huh. But with Frederick's ataxia, there is like a lot of symptoms. It's not just like one thing is wrong with you. Like there is a lot of different ones. Like uh, the muscles in my heart. You know, they get weaker. Uh, The muscles in my throat, it makes it more difficult to swallow or to talk. Um, I don't walk anymore. I use a wheelchair full time now. Um, I, that was probably up until high school, a little after high school. And um, just motor di- motor functions really hard for me. Uh, uh, and and I see on um, I saw I saw online that that it said usually um, usually it starts between when you're 10, 10 to fifteen. It, um, is that um, is that what happened Is that what happened to you? And and and, and how did you like like um like like when when did you when did you first when did you first notice and then uh, when did you first notice and then when did you um and and then what what led up to you uh you you or your parents saying okay well let's um uh, let's let's get some tests and figure this out well I was diagnosed when I was 11 but I've always been clumsy and that's just what my family thought it was. They were just thought, you know, I was clumsy, I'm tall, I'm skinny. So they just thought, you know, it was normal. And then it kind of got to the point where I couldn't keep up with the other kids. I didn't have the energy or anything. So my mom started taking me to the doctor and Luckily, he knew what it was as soon as he saw me, so he could, you know, specifically test for that um, because it's actually harder to, for some people to get this diagnosis because I get misdiagnosed a lot because the doctors, you know, think it's something else something that is similar but this has like a certain genetic code that they can look at and properly diagnose you for it huh. so that's um so that's really awesome that the the, the very first um doctor that you're that, that you went to about this um was like oh um it, it could be this let's test let's test for this so um, so, so that's, that's really, really cool that you, uh, uh, that, that, that's really, really cool that you found, uh, or th- that you didn't have to go through, like, a, a year or 10 years or, or, or even longer of, like, getting wrong diagnoses and saying, oh, well, I don't, um, the doctors say this, but I don't think that's what it is. Um, so, so that's really cool that you were able to find out, like, right, um, right away. Yeah, because, I went to a MBA camp, a summer camp, with another girl, and she was diagnosed with something else. But then, like, she went back, and they're like, "No, we think it is Friedrich's ataxia." And I was like, "Well, that's what I have." And like, we were kind of comparing notes a little bit, you know. Huh? That's um. That's um that's really that's really interesting and um and and I um I saw online that it's it's pretty um it's it's pretty rare it says one one in every fifty thousand people uh, one in every fifty thousand people have um has it and then and how many 
how many other people have you met with Friedrich's ataxia? And have you ever um, ha have you ever been, been just like in Walmart and um, and or, or like one of your friends or uh, uh, like like um, how many how many people have you how many other people have you met with Friedrich's ataxia? Well, uh, when I was younger, um, probably about two thousand nine, me and my mom went to a, uh, a national Ataxia Foundation conference in Seattle, so I was able to meet a couple of other girls who had it. But like I said, there's no one really around here that uh, has it. I've never met anyone around here. The girls I met, one was from California, and I'm not really sure where the other one was, but like <laughs> no one around here does. And um, you know, when I was younger, I used to get like in trouble. Like me and my brother would get in trouble when we go to the grocery store because I would get in a wheelchair and he would push me around, and then um. Some of the clerks or people who work there would be like, you you don't need to be playing in that. Get out. <laughs> and, uh, my brother was kind of like, no, she needs this. So, so that's really cool. Your uh, that's really cool. Your brother uh, push um, push you around, and and you were you were having so much fun that there that the that the adults were like, hey, stop having fun over there. Yeah. <laughs> so um so 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 one of the questions that I have is is that um yeah um, you you, um, you mentioned that you've always been kind of um kind of clumsy and tall, and that's what your uh, parents have, have have thought about, or or, or um, that's what your parents thought thought it was just just initially. Um, so um in so so from your perspective do, um does it kind of seem like there was a period in your life like before you had it and a period in your life af after you had it because uh, um, um because i read that the, that it like onsets on, onsets in, in in the 10 to 15 um age so, um, so 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 i'm wondering if 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 from your perspective it feels like it's always been that way um or or, 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 or from your perspective, it feels like, oh, well, before, um, before this age, it was this way. And then after this age, it was this way. Uh, um, I, I don't know if that question even makes, even makes sense, but. Oh. It does, it does. Um, personally, uh, Friedrich's Hector is a progressive disease. And so like, before I knew about it, and we're like 11 is probably, 11 would be the cough date for like childhood stuff, you know, not having to really think about dark stuff, dark and sad things sometimes. And not really having to like, you know, work on things that other people don't need to do eat certain things or do whatever you have to like it was it my childhood was a lot different a lot funner but uh, okay. I think everyone could say that about their childhood yeah um yeah that um that that totally makes sense. So, so, so the way you kind of look at it is, is like, like before, uh, um, before eleven, you were just kind of like a, a regular child, not really, not really having to think about anything. And then, um, and then, uh, um, and then after that, then, um, th um, then, then you kind of had to be like, okay, well now, um, now I have to think about this, and and, and so kind, um, kind of, um, kind of, it's more that your your childhood was over um, when, uh, um, when, when you were eleven, um, more. Um, more um, more so than what what I was kind of kind of wondering. So 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 that's a that's an that's an interesting way of of uh, describing it. So so you mentioned about like like diet um uh, diet and food um 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 and like eating eating special things. Can you um can can you talk about that? Like like is there stuff that you shouldn't eat or 
um, is uh, like, like like difficult to eat or 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 what um what about what about diet and food? Well, I'm not exactly the best. I don't eat the best <laughs> at all. Um, some things that would probably be better and like cut out like the glucose or the the um what's it called the stuff in like breads and things I probably shouldn't eat them so much but the my thing would probably be iron like I I can eat things that have iron in them but I can't take iron supplements I get uh -huh. like sick and I get a headache and it's just not any fun for me because a more complicated aspect of dyslexia is it also has to do with iron. You have uh, in your mitochondria in the cell in your body, you have tons of mitochondria and they're what give you energy. And you have what is called protaxin, and that protaxin binds to iron, and so you don't like have a bunch of free radicals and things like that in your body. So my, I don't have as much protaxin as a normal person would have. So my mitochondrias are sicker than you know a normal healthy mitochondria so the more iron is not a good thing for me even though I get anemic sometimes and another thing is like I'm supposed to I have a real issue with like, drinking if I'm not careful like even drinking water will make me choke I'm they want me to sicken it <laughs> and the only way they've told me is like put cornmeal or something in there to make it thicker and I'm like I'm not doing that That's disgusting <laughs> and I saw a video for this stuff called thick water and he poured it out on his porch and let it sit there for a few hours and you know normal water would have evaporated but that stuff didn't and I was like I don't know if that is a good thing to put in your body yeah, it sounds like um, it sounds like the stuff that they ate in the Matrix uh, when they were in that when they were in that ship, and they were all talking about how um, how disgusting it disgusting it was. So, so yeah, um, drinking drinking a drinking thick water with cornmeal does, um, sounds sounds like one of the worst um, the worst things the worst things possible. So that so that's interesting. So, um, so so another question is um, so so if um, if, if if somebody had a friend and their child were diagnosed with free di free um, Friedrich's uh, tax, um, so, um, so, you I'm can sorry. just say FA <laughs> for short. Okay. Um, so 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 if somebody had a if somebody like if one of my friends had a child and they um, and, and their child was was just diagnosed with uh, Friedrich's ataxia or FA, um, then then what what would your advice to me um, what would your advice to me be? Well, I would definitely get them to look at fara.org, F-A-R-A.org, because they have some really good resources for anyone that has F-A, anyone who's been really diagnosed, especially any parents or caregivers. Is, it's, a, it's a really good resource for anyone, really. Oh, cool. But yeah, that would be, that would probably be my number one thing, go-to thing for anyone who's been 
newly diagnosed or someone who knows someone who's being diagnosed or something like that. Cool. So, um, so, so, so that's really good that there's a, um, that there's a really good, um, there's a really good resource. And, um, so, so is there, um, is there, um, is there a lot of like, um, community support, like FAA community support or like, um, support group? Um, you, you, you mentioned, you mentioned a conference in Seattle that you went, um, that, that you went to. Yeah. Um, I mean, there is, like Facebook groups you, you can join. Uh, you can always, um, there's, um, there's just a lot of different ways you can go about it if you wanna find support for it. Um, I know some people, there's, um, I know one guy who has FA and I'm he does a podcast with his friend. I think I don't know what his friend has, but I know he's handicapped also. But yeah, really just reaching out to anyone is a good way because they'll pass you on to where you need to go. Oh, um, cool. So, um, so, so we're, um, we're, we're about out of time, but I wanted to say, um, thanks, um, thanks so much for doing this. Um, any, um, any final words or final thoughts before we, before we wrap up? Um, no, uh, thank you for inviting me and I probably came across as really awkward. <laughs> I'm uh, fumbling over my own words, but uh, just thank you. I've never done anything like this. I've never really had an offer. And well, thank uh, you for the award on my last check. You're, um, you're, um, you're welcome. Your, uh, your last check, uh, your last check was, um, was, was awesome. And, and thanks, um, thanks very much for talking about some of my, um, for talking about some of my favorite, uh, my favorite things. Um, um, latch hooking is is super is super exciting. I um, I really like, um, I really like Stardew Valley and everything and everything like it. So thanks for, um, thanks th thanks for telling me, or, or, or um, thank thanks for making me a little bit less scared of Animal Crossing. And and it's it's really really interesting to find out about Friedrich Friedrich's ataxia or or FA. Um, so, so I really appreciate you open, um, opening up and sharing, um, sh um, sharing all that information because it's, um, it's just really, really, uh, it's just really, really interesting. So, so, so thanks, um, thanks so much for doing this um, interview with me. Thank you.